is affecting the brain. And it's fast developing, even in Nigeria here, and it's really, really disabling for the child because there's um, a problem regarding the brain, affecting the communication, affecting the social interaction, and the cognitive functioning. So as much as possible, we don't say autism because it's a spectrum disorder. There are other types of, um, it has um, different types from the, where if you want to simplify it to the public, we say the mild autism and the severe autism, but these are not diagnoses. It's just for people to understand, parents, um, teachers, the general populace, to understand what it is because some have better functioning than others. Some have affect only girls than boys. Some have um, language, they can actually speak, but they have um, problems with social interaction and cognitive functioning. So we need to distinguish that. So basically that is what we call the autism spectrum disorder. Disorders. Okay, you said it's, um, it's on the increase. Is it about, um, what figures do you have to back this up? And again, is it about it being on the increase or more people being aware and okay. coming out to say, I think my child has this. In the developed world, more people are you know, coming out to really say my child is having is, I am autism. And um, it's one in 88 children. So, well, back then in 1980s, it was a researcher, Lutzer, that you know, did something regarding the Africa, not only in Nigeria, and found that there was one in 145. But currently, we're having increase because people are getting aware, number one, and another thing, other contributing risk factors, like prematurity is a risk to having autism. Um, low birth weight is a risk to having autism. People are associating other factors to read. Of course, boys are more prone to having autism than girls, four in, the one, four in one ratio. So we have more boys. And then Why is that? <laughs> It's a, a kind of a genetic thing. Autism basically cause is unknown. And it's not only in autism, it's cuts across any form of medical disorder. And um, apart from the genetic um, composition, which is about 80 to 90 percent in autism, as, uh, also we look at the identical twin. Uh, it's also a risk factor. Twin is a, because if you have a twin, one twin having autism, the probability of the other one having autism is as high as 90 percent. Okay, and you say it has to do with the brain. We have this picture, you know, on the screen right now. How does it really work? Is it just affecting a part of the brain or the Are people are looking brain? at the um, um, inflammatory mechanism of the brain now. That is, it has some things to do with uh, um, when, like, um, the, that particular research, they looked at the brains of people that had autism when they died. And they found that there were some form of inflammatory processes that were going on in the brain. So it cuts across. Especially the fact that when you look at the communication, social, social interaction, how do they know that this child has autism? They don't really have this eye contact thing. They don't really have, um, express themselves. They don't show like a child, a mother leaving a child and you see the child crying. In cases of autism, they don't really like show the affection. They like look at a part of a toy instead of looking at a toy as a whole. So they have this affection to that particular part. And most times people get to know that there's something wrong with that child because of maybe the language, the speech is not coming up. I said, oh, this child, there's something, something, up until they now go to a proper physician to say, this is it. They will start reflecting, but that, yes, yeah, this child doesn't really have eye contact. I mean, this child doesn't really show emotion when I'm leaving him behind or her behind and all that. So those are the things we need to look at as the primary phase. And of course, the diagnosis, it, the symptoms come on before the ages of three. So we shouldn't look at it that, oh, this child um, is now four or five years and we are not, ha no, there's something wrong, then we should, no, no, no. So it can't come after? after yes, it can come after three years of age. But as early as even six, seven, eight months old, if you are very vigilant, you notice some certain things, because those are the things you see in children early. Things the like social that. smile, okay. the looking at your mom, the, and the, a child looking at the mom when breastfeeding. You know, they don't really have that eye contact. So uh, that babbling at before uh, at the age of one is not really there. So if you are very vigilant or somebody around that knows 
then they cannot there's something wrong but they will not really nail it down but as a child advances two years of age has not attained any is not speaking then you should actually know that that child should go for you no know, kind, kind of, of a, screening screening okay so now know. just before we go on you have said um, sometimes the courses are not known so, yeah, majorly uh, so uh, does it have anything to do with perhaps what the mother at why she was pregnant <laughs> or where she went, you know, things like that. Well, we see uh, a lot of mothers are really hitting on themselves. They feel so guilty that maybe they didn't do the proper thing, they didn't eat the proper meal, they didn't do. A lot of researches are coming up and they're still ongoing regarding to diet, what they ate, regarding to exposure to certain things when they were pregnant, regarding to accidents and all that. We've had some very provocative researches that were done outside the country um, in South California. That was last year. And they said um, children exposed to traffic air pollution are three times more likely to have autism. Likewise, mothers are pregnant in that same condition. Their children are likely to be more prone to autism, twice more prone to autism. So imagine that in South California being replicated here in Lagos, a city like Lagos. So w these are the researches we need to really prove that. And that is one research that people are really looking at. Could that be possible? And they didn't look at one or two kids. They looked at children, more than 200 kids, and they compared them with children that don't live in that area. And they found out that there was something wrong somewhere. So there are things that could, um, there are risk factors that could you could take and they are exposed. Also the issue of the folic acid thing, taking it before pregnancy and taking it throughout pregnancy. Some researchers have found that there's some little significant difference if you take folic acid throughout than uh, mothers that didn't take. So those are the little things, um, the, um, researches that are coming up and more are still yet to be shown. Okay, so. and uh, what about the one that has to do with the the age of the father oh, at the time of very conception? Very important, very, very important, because um, a lot of men don't want to marry early. They want to have money. They want to have houses. They have to have good job. But please, young men out there, get married quick, because the new research is linked to autism now. They are showing that the older the, ch the, the, the age of the father at the time of conception of a child is linked to autism. So, and this was done in the... So, if a, fa if a, if a man is... Um, older, the, the, older. The, age, the, the limit was 29.7 um, years. That, like, let's approximate it to 30 years of age. So, the older the man is... So, from 30 years from 30 and 30 years and above. So, men will say, oh, I'm 90 years old, I can still have a child. Yes, you can still have a child, but the likelihood of this child having autism is, is high. And for mothers, yes, there are, there are no researches that have actually spelled it out regarding child and mother's age with... A child with um, special needs like the Down syndrome that you can't see take it away. But now, currently, for autism is linked to the the age of the father and the age of the grandfather. Okay, and and what about the 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 aspect of vaccine? Well, oh, vaccines that that one is a myth. That one has been debunked. Vaccines. A lot of parents felt that maybe when they took the vaccines, measles, um, mumps and rubella, these MMR vaccines, that the children do have autism. No, that has been debunked. Take your vaccines because the complications of not taking the vaccine is higher than even having a child with autism. So please, mothers, parents, encourage young mothers to always take their children for vaccination. Take all the children's vaccination. That has nothing to do with autism. For okay, now. and while you were talking earlier, you, you mentioned something about the child not having eye contact. Yeah. What are the other signs to look out for? Apart from the eye contact, they don't they don't understand people's emotions so much. They, they, they tend to play more on their own than interacting with other people, they tend to like a routine. If they come in here, they can they, you know, arrange things in order, and by way of changing it, they can throw tantrums. They like routine of a regular meal. If they like, like rice, they can take rice, rice, rice. For any reason you want to introduce, like beans or amal or something, they, they reject it. So they like orderliness. They like... Um, being on their own, they like to play with some inanimate objects. And the thing about autism is that two people cannot have the same type of autism. It varies in all individuals. For the fact that this person has these symptoms doesn't mean that maybe the tire, the candy will have the same. No, even the two identical twins. So it varies in, in different individuals. So those are the things people should really look at. For. Some of them are very sensitive to sound. Some like cry and scream. Some are very hyperactive. And um, 
it's a spectrum disorder and they have the what we call the co-travelers aside from having autism they also have things like